Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about how to square numbers and square expressions, and also how to take square roots of numbers and expressions. So here we go. So first of all, what does squaring mean? Well, squaring is actually a kind of a nickname for raising a number to the second power. And raising a number to a second power just means multiplying it times itself. For example, if we raise five to the second power, that's the same as saying five times five, which is 25. Interestingly, um, raising negative five to the second power means multiplying negative five times negative five, which also equals 25 because a negative times a negative is a positive. Now you do have to uh, be careful here. There is a big difference between the negative five being in parentheses and not being in parentheses. So what I mean by that is if it said negative five squared, that's telling you that only the five is being raised to the second power. And so what that is saying is just let that negative tag along and we're multiplying five times five. So that's gonna be negative 25. So be aware of the difference between these two situations so you can avoid making an error. All right, now let's look at part C. In part C, the parentheses are acting as what's called a grouping symbol. So what that means is that whatever's happening inside the parentheses needs to be done first. In the parentheses, we have the operation addition. We need to add the four and the three first before we square the number. So four plus three is actually seven that's being squared. Now, since there's no negative or anything, those parentheses actually aren't doing any good at this point. So I'm gonna just write it without the parentheses. So seven squared is seven times itself, which means 49. A common error to avoid here is students often want to square each part of the parentheses first. So I just want you to note that four squared plus three squared is not equal to four plus three quantity squared. This on the left would be 16 plus nine, and on the right, this would be, as we know, seven squared. 16 plus nine is 25, seven squared is 49. So it just doesn't work to just square each part of that addition. So don't make that mistake. Always do what's inside the parentheses first. So that's squaring numbers, when you have numbers inside the parentheses or being affected by the power of two. But what about if we have an algebraic expression, something with variables in it? So let's look at part D here. X plus three quantity squared. We would like to do what's inside the parentheses first, but unfortunately X and three are not like terms. We can't put them together. So we have to leave them separate. So what are we gonna do with this? This means multiply X plus three times itself. We cannot say x squared plus three squared. That doesn't work. Just like with four plus three, we couldn't say four squared plus three squared. So what are we gonna do about this? Well, there's something called the distributive property, which allows us to multiply the x plus three times each term in the other x plus three. So effectively, you're going to have x times x plus three plus three times x plus three distributing the x plus three to each part. And so that's gonna give you, distributing further, x times x is x squared plus three x plus, distributing the three, we get three x plus nine, which gives you x squared plus six x plus nine. You might also have learned that you can do something called FOIL. It'll turn out the same. FOIL tells us that we multiply the first term times the first term. Hence, in the word FOIL, we have the letter F. Then multiply the outer term times the outer term, the outside term, so O. Then multiply the inner term times the inner term, so that's the letter I. And then multiply the last term times the last term, that's the letter L. First times first is X times X, which gives you X squared. Outer times outer is three times X, or three X. Inner times inner is also three times X, which gives you this three X. And last times last is three times three, which is nine. So we still get the same result using FOIL. 
So on part E, we're gonna use foil. Let's see how it works out. So first thing is when you see um, x minus three squared, you try to work inside the parentheses first, but you can't combine like terms here. There's, they're not like terms because the three doesn't have an x with it. So we're going to write it as a product, x minus three times x minus three. And then we're gonna use foil. First times first is gonna be x squared x times x, so x squared. Outer times outer is gonna be x times negative three, so negative three x. Inner times inner is gonna be negative three times x, which is also negative three x. And last times last is gonna be negative three times negative three. Negative times negative is a positive nine. So combining like terms, negative three x and negative three x adds up to negative six x, we get x squared minus six x plus nine. Okay, now we're gonna talk about reversing the process of squaring an expression and we're going to take square roots. Okay, so the instructions here to uh, take the square roots of numbers, perform the indicated operation, give an exact solution. If the solution involves a radical expression, also give a decimal approximation to the nearest hundred. What is taking the square root? Well, taking the square root is really asking a question. It's called a square root because even though it's not written, there's a little two here called the index. It's assumed to be there. And that's telling you that the question we're asking is, what number would you raise to the second power in order to get 25? And we know raising to the second power means multiplying by itself. What number did we raise to the second power to get 25 on the previous slide? We raised the number five to the second power. We also saw that you could raise the number negative five, but if we wanted the negative version of the number, we would have put a negative in the front of the radical. So we only want the positive version of the number. So when you see square root of 25, you're gonna say, okay, well, the number that I square or raise to the second power to get 25 is five. And that's all it is. So when I say, what's the square root of 49? You're gonna think, okay, what number do I raise to the second power or multiply by itself to get 49? And if you're not sure, just start listing them. One squared equals one. Two squared equals four. Three squared equals nine. Four squared equals 16. They get big pretty fast. Five squared equals 25. Six squared equals 36. 7 squared equals oh, 49. So we just found that the square root of 49 is the number 7. How about the square root of 18? Notice that on this list here, there is no 18, and the numbers are just going to get bigger. So 18 is not what we would call a perfect square. So what you want to do is look for the biggest number on this list, the biggest number less than 18, that divides evenly into 18. So, okay. I'm gonna look at 16. Nope, 16 doesn't divide evenly into 18. So I'm gonna go down to the next number, nine. Nine does divide evenly into 18. And the reason that's important is because you're gonna think of this as the square root of nine times two. Thinking of the 18 as nine times two, it turns out that if you have a product under a square root, and this doesn't work for addition, by the way, if you have a product under a square root, you can just take the square root of each part which is nice. Only works for multiplication and division. Anyway, square root of nine is what? Well, it's three because three squared is equal to nine, but you can't take that two out of the radical. It has to stay under the square root symbol. So three times the square root of two is the answer to this one. Now, this is what's called a radical expression. And the instructions told us if we got a radical expression to give a, an exact solution, this would be considered the exact solution. But it also asked us to give a decimal approximation. Let's get out our calculator. By the way, in your calculator, you can take square roots as well. So for example, just to show you the square root of 25, 25 square root would be five. We already figured that out, but you could use your calculator to confirm that. But what would be three times the square root of two? So I'm going to say three times, I'm gonna hit the two and take the square root and hit equals. So three times the square root of two is 
4.2426, etc. We're supposed to go to the nearest hundredth, which is the second decimal place. The third decimal place is a two, so we're not gonna round up. I'm just gonna put approximately 4.24. Three root two is approximately 4.24. Okay, so that's taking square roots of numbers. Now let's talk about taking square roots of expressions. How do you take the square root of an expression. Squares and square roots are opposites of each other. They reverse each other. So as long as the variable that's in your expression is a positive, if it's being squared, the square root and the square cancel each other out. Why? Because what this is really saying is what number raised to the second power gives us x squared? Well, it's x to the second power, right? So the square root of x squared is just x. The square root and the square cancel each other out. All right, how about then, what would be the square root of a squared? Well, the square root and the square cancel each other out. So square root of a squared is a. How about the square root of x plus one squared? Well, what you don't wanna do is start multiplying x plus one times x plus one and multiply that all out. You'll, you'll be stuck, you'll get stuck. What you wanna do is just see, oh look, this whole thing is just some unknown number that's squared. So if we take the square root of a perfect square, we're gonna get just the unknown number. So it's just gonna be equal to x plus one. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because that will help other students to find the video.